CM Punk called Eddie Kingston fat, lazy, and unsafe. We got the reason Brock Lesnar is returning on the December 10th SmackDown, and AEW definitely planned to sign Bray Wyatt. Stay tuned. So cast your minds back to AEW Rampage last week, a rather heated promo battle, if you will, between CM Punk and Eddie Kingston. And at uh, one point during this interaction, Eddie Kingston brought up the fact that Punk had called him fat. Yeah, uh, and it was sort of from back when Eddie Kingston was just getting into the business as well. It appears so now. So a lot of fans were like, what's, what's that about, yeah. right? Um, but we've got further details on this um, from a wrestler, a former wrestler slash subscriber uh, to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, who wrote in and said, I can fully vouch for Eddie's promo on Punk the other night. I was sitting right there in an IWA Mid-South locker room when Punk called Eddie and his partner at the time fat, lazy and unsafe. Um, his partner had just accidentally injured Delirious in a previous match and Punk was hot about it so just buried them non-stop. I could see why Eddie hung on to that hate and anger for so long and you know what I'm really glad he did because it felt so real and this brilliant. Is, this is it and when you inject real life situations into wrestling storylines this is often where some of the best wrestling content comes from. Oh right? yeah because he's got a genuine you get that victory on his shoulder right? right? Yeah. It, it, it's just there and you know it's you know if you go back to the Punk situation it's like oh why did he bury and it's you know it's a fairly standard thing because when you're out there if you're you know you, you're supposed to be kind of looking out for everybody and if somebody deems you to be the reason that someone's injured they might get hot with you mm -hmm. but I you know I'm just sort of I'm, I'm glad that they've got this to play off because I'm assuming yeah. everything's maybe water under the bridge now but oh, you know working so. together 10, 15 and years ago and, yeah and you know it's, so uh, hopefully this is just going to blossom into more and more I would love to see this just continue on way past full gear really I just Eddie okay. Kingston Punk yeah I mean you've got yeah. two the best talkers in the game full stop yeah. and then you add like a real life situation that they can play yeah. off it's, yeah. it's money isn't it and I, I can't wait for the match also can't wait for Brock Lesnar's return to Smackdown that is taking place on December 10th he's had to buy a, a ticket to the show right I'm sure it's really hurt his wallet right, well you, you say that <laughs> I looked online and they're like close to $700 he dues for a ticket but with that Lesnar will get to take home a commemorative chair and he will get a photo opportunity with the WWE superstars. So hopefully him and him and Reigns can make up so they can have a nice little. He takes it just wherever he goes hunting, just puts his little <laughs> puts his little smackdown chair down, sits with his 50 cal. Anyway, we've got the reason that it's happening on December 10th. And it's not just about the build to Royal Rumble, although that does factor into it, of course. Um, in the Observer, Lesnar will be returning on that SmackDown in LA. The idea is he's gonna buy a ringside ticket. The show is a major one because they're running the show in a city largely for five. Fox exe executive, sorry, to get a major Fox show in Fox's home base. Lesnar is obviously one of the key people they're interested in, and it'll likely be be the start to build Lesnar for the Rumble show. So it's all to do with the TV deal. I, Once again, get Lesnar on the show in front of the Fox execs. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I just hope that Vince makes him actually buy his own ticket. Yeah, me too. I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Just, you know, it all goes towards, you know, the the, the, the big revenue. Push. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's almost sold out. It's, it's only like a few rows back. He's not going to be on hard cam. <laughs> if he's got one of the tickets that's on Ticketmaster.com right now, he won't be on hard cam. So they'll have to work around that, but they'll they'll figure it they out. They forget they've double the booked the seat. Somebody else turns <laughs> up to sit down. There's Brock Lesnar. What would you do? <laughs> I'll turf him out. Scruff of his neck. Get out of my out. seat. Uh, next up, Triple A interesting, uh, interested sorry, in using some of the released WWE talent and also some of the ROH talent that was released very recently. So regarding Triple A interest in talent that will be available with Ring of Honor releasing everyone from their deals and WWE's recent cuts, for the most part, it depends on COVID and their ability to sell tickets to shows once capacity restrictions are lifted. We are told, this is the Observer, that they are interested in Taya Valkyrie for sure whether she is interested and available. Uh, they are also interested in bringing back Killer Cross and Scarlet, but not until 2022. And also Mascara Dorada, AKA the man that you know as Grand Metalik. Um, but they also have their new generation of high flyers. Um, plus a major signing expected from Mexico. But in 2022, they absolutely are interested in Valkyrie, Flamita, Ray Horus, and Roosh, and already have dates with Dragon Lee and Drillistico. So maybe expect to see some of those names pop up there. Yeah. I, I, mean, I think a lot of us expect, especially Grand Metal League, I'm yeah, not surprised to I, see him head back there. I if think, he does. you know, AAA are in a, a very good situation right now where there is a lot of talent that they are able to kind of, you know, hit up and see if they're willing oh, to come man, down. A lot of free agents you know, There right might now. be a lot of people they thought, wow, they work quite 
quite well, but we might not, not be able to get him. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that we've not seen any dates kind of announced for somebody like Braun. I think he'd be a huge get for yeah, somebody I mean, like AAA. I think Impact made a play for him, didn't they? Yeah. He's yet to do anything. He's had a match. He had the match with yeah. the EC3, didn't he? But nothing for like a major promotion or anything. And it's interesting that you say that AAA uh, are in a quite a good position right now because they're very not, much not yeah. according to this next story. This is really scary, horrible stuff. I can't believe this. So a AAA big lucha show that was scheduled to take place at Metapec Fair on November 10th has had to be postponed after a criminal gang hung up a banner threatening uh, their performers not to show up unless they want the blood of their fans or themselves to be spilled. This is serious, horrible stuff. And a bit more on this from Cubs fan. Um, so the local promoter of the AAA show in Metapec, um, Lucha Libre collector Christian Simet, I believe it's pronounced, held a press conference to promote that show. He insisted that the show would remain on despite those threats from a local criminal group, um, but in, eventually it was sort of out of his hands because yeah. the entire fair was canceled because of that criminal threat. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to know anything about this. This was something to do between the criminal group and the local government. Yeah, and it, I guess, you know, the fair might be something that would generate revenue or might be a positive thing for the local government and if they can stop that then maybe it's going to harm I don't even know I'm but you know it, it's it's just nobody should have to go to a wrestling show and worry about something like that so thank god it, it has been cancelled because I mean how do you how do you police that? How do you secure that? It, it, it's not something you dick around with. No, you do criminal, criminal gangs out there. I mean, like, they're, the they're not, would, that's not talk, that's is it? That's the thing. But, I think if the show had gone ahead, I don't think people would have gone. It, and it, it, like, Yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't. Um, anyway, uh, AEW, finishing off on this story. AEW definitely planned to say, sign Bray Wyatt, sorry. Um, so this is once again from The Observer, and Dave writes, there was definitely a plan in place at one point, but Impact also had interest. We, we've heard that before. Yeah. He didn't want to come in at this point, obviously, because he had the movie role that he's filming right now. Whether he ends up here or in Impact, time will tell. I'd like to see him in either. I, I just, whenever I hear the Impact thing, I was just think they probably can't afford him. He's such a big name. He's, yeah. he's going to start doing movies and stuff that would probably but increase his value, you would assume? This is the other thing. I was thinking about this. We haven't had, like, you know, a Jason Voorhees, like a new type of big movie villain in a long time. And what if Bray somehow becomes the rock of horror films? Like, he'd never have to work again, really. He could just go off and do Hollywood. So I think that's yeah. a whole avenue that could he's, be he's just... He's good enough to do it. And that's it. And he's got the creativity, certainly, to work in films because, you know, WWE have been saying how difficult he was, which means, hey, I've got an idea. Hey, how about I don't do that? <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's, it's something that I think is gradually in my head anyway, becoming more and more of a possibility that Bray just ends up going off to Hollywood. Yeah, and good for him. Yeah. Good for him. I think he's had a rough old few years. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure he's made lots and lots of money yeah. and everything, and he got to work a limited schedule toward the but, end. But he's, like, creatively, he must be so unsatisfied. And he's a very it. creative man who wants to... But I, I, I you remember trait. back when when it first started with the whole Firefly Funhouse thing, we were all like, what is this? Yeah, and then nah, and quickly, quickly like it. it was just like, whoa. It's amazing how quickly they messed it up and how many times they messed it up yeah. in the time that he was, like, the, the Firefly Funhouse slash Fiend And then character. they just kind of took it off him and gave it to Alexa for a bit. And, <laughs> There you go. Will we see him in AEW? Let us know in the comments what you think. That has been it from myself and Sam for today. A triple threat of news. We'll be back tomorrow with your... More. More. Nailed that, didn't I? <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs>